Hello and welcome, I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike. But together, we are... Modelling for Advantage! <laughs> All right, Mike, uh, do you want to read them out what's going to come in this set? I see it contains more than a thousand soldiers in red plastic. In red plastic, yes. Red plastic. The Waterloo Campaign Wellington British Army Starter Set contains British Infantry, 800 line infantry, mm, that's a lot of men. 200 riflemen, Ooh. 10 mounted commanders, Nice. British Heavy Cavalry, two bases of Royal Scots Greys, three bases of Household Cavalry, and six bases of Heavy Dragoons. Light Cavalry, three bases of Hussars in Shakos, three bases of Hussars in Busbies, and five bases of Light Dragoons. There's two different types of Hussars there. Yes. Nice. Then we go to Artillery. Mm. Ten Royal Artillery, nine pounders. Three Royal Horse Artillery, six pounders. Three Royal Horse Artillery, nine pounders. Green Plastic Bases for all figures. 260-page A5 Black Powder Epic Battles rulebook. More on that later. Assembly and painting guides, flag sheets for British and Allied forces, La Belle Alliance Inn in MDF, and 66 dice. 66. My money's on cracker dice. Right. Well, uh, let's have a look. I'll pull these out and show you what we got inside. So, as I said, we have got uh, the two different types of cavalry. We've got the... Oh, this one is the reading this red plastic that's the heavy cavalry sprue so there's three of the light cavalry sprue there's a whole ah, 10 of the infantry sprue yep that's 10 of them rule book in a little baggie Copy I like that's, that, that's that's the best bit protects it uh, the bases it's the wrist of precision thing, and then some little bits of paper. So that's 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 what we got, as Mike said. Um, we'll be right back. Right, so first up then, let's have a look at this British Heavy Cavalry sprue. So the three types we've got, we've got Scots Greys, Household Cavalry, and Dragoons. Lots and lots of Heavy Dragoons. Um, so the middle portion of the sprue, there's, there's ten models here, which is a straight two-up basis per sprue, because on the bases it takes five models. You've seen that. So each of these sprues is going to make you one base of dragoons. But then there's your other bits, because you've got at the bottom, you've got your household cavalry. What do they what do they call them? They call them household cavalry. Yep. Yeah. So they've got a different shako plume, and the, the, yep. well, they've got a different shako, a uh, different helmet, sort of. Crested plumage, and then uh, like a, I don't know, <laughs> a straight bit of a yeah. plume uh, to one side. And you've got six of those models, and then you've got four in this unusual headgear, which is just, which is I think your Scots Greys. Yeah, I think that might even be a Belgic Shako, but I'm not sure. Um, you've also got your Royal Horse Artillery on there, and again, they're in different uniforms. To the lineup, when we see the foot artillery, yeah. the crew are different. But also, this is a nine pounder, not a six pounder. But it says that we get a six pounder also in this. So maybe when we look at the light cavalry sprue, so you can mix and match that, which I like. You've got more varieties of artillery in this set than we got in the French, because everything was a six pounder in there. We'll see if they're actually different. So, what, what do you reckon, Mike? You're having, you're having a look at these, presumably for the first time. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're all carrying the straight saber. They are, so they're all heavy cavalry. Yeah, and... We've read sharp, right? We know that. Yes. Yeah, straight sword, heavy cavalry. And several of them have got their carbines down on the saddle, so... Yeah, I mean, they're nice Scots. What I like about them is that they're not duplicated. They're not, they're not identical posings. You know, they're, but they're very, yeah. very similar. So you're still going to get that regimented look when you put them together. But it's just like I'm looking at this sort of line of dragoons across here, and each one is holding his sword at a slightly different angle. You know, and, um, yeah. and they're not they're not not massive differences. Some of them have got their um, weapons. Not all of them are necessarily carrying a musket in there. Like this one, this yeah. one here I'm seeing doesn't have a musket for example. So it's nice because you want the regimental look on this scale. You don't want to look too different, but a little bit of difference is going to make it look so much more authentic, right? Yeah. Yeah? 
And the same if you look at the Scots Greys, you've got three of them in charge mm. and one of them in Hussar. So Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm no expert. I'm just thinking, I thought the Scots Greys wore bearskins. Not sure. The only thing I know about the Scots Greys is that they were all grey horses. They were, on, they were on grey horses, because there's no such thing as a white horse, apparently. Yeah. Talk to horse people. Um, no, I'm just thinking, like, like you know, the, the paintings you get in on pubs and so forth, but there's yeah. several such ones, and um, you see that. I thought they were all in bearskins. But that I am, I am not a Napoleonic <laughs> uniform guy. If they reckon that this is the uniform they wore at Waterloo, I'm sure they're right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're right. But the balance on this one is good as well. Because so much of this brew is actually made up of, of, of heavy dragoons. They're not those super elite, unique units, which you don't want loads of. Yeah. There's only one unit of Scots Greys, right? So they've not over, overburdened this brew with them. Like that a lot. Nicely balanced, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. So as we move on to the light cavalry then, uh, pass you one of them over. Uh, to the, the light cavalry. So is the artillery identically posed? I don't think it is. No, there, there's one each side of the wheel. So same uniforms, but yeah. That, all... So that's really nice. It's allowing you to mix it up. Yeah, because this the light cavalry sprue. It's a bit more dynamic, isn't it? The guy, the, the, there's there's a guy indicating that you the heavy cavalry's got the six pounder. Is it? And oh, this is, yeah, this is a bigger gun. That is definitely a bigger gun. Yeah. Right. So the six pounder, the nine pounder on the light cap. I don't thought it would have been the other way yeah. around. Um, yeah. So these then, we said we've got two different types of hussars based upon the headgear. And what was the other light dragoons? We've got uh, three of huzz hussars in shakos, three in busbies, and five bases of light dragoons. Dagoons? Dagoons. 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 He's falling down the well. <laughs> right. So the hussars are all going to be... Um, the, the distinctive thing about the hussars is that they wear a, their jacket over their left shoulder. Yeah. So that's the bottom right away from opposite end of the cannons. Right. So there's four of those. No, nope, Five there. Six. Yeah. And there's, then there's two different types of dragoons. Yeah. Of, of hussars on here. And then the rest are your light dragoons, which are just wearing shakos. Yeah. Yeah. That's the top four, top six, top eight. Yeah. So yeah. bottom half of the sprue from the centre gate. Yeah. Is 12 of one type. And then we've got eight of the other type. Is that right? Yeah, I, th I think so. So again, you've got this nice mixture of poses. It's good again that they've put that the, your your light dragoons. Well, was, uh, light dragoons. I think there's only British that use light dragoons. Yeah. I think everybody else has. We have light dragoons, but other people have things like chasseurs or cheval or whatever. This is a line type yeah. line type light cavalry. Um, Whereas your hussars are much more glamorous. I love the fact that they've given you two different types of hussars, so you can make that distinction between the different hussar regiments. Um, and and the hussars are in much more gallant poses, aren't they? They're, mu yes. they're, they're much more like, huzzah! Yeah, yeah. you know, um, which is which is nice. Um, I have a feeling that, that light dragoons might have a different weapon to normal cavalry. In, that, in, in, in this kind of dim and distant memory type stuff. Well, they've got the light curved saber, haven't they? All the light cavalry have got the curved saber. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's got that. But there's something about light dragoons that are making them light dragoons rather than something else and why we have them. I'm not, I'm not sure. But, you got, so you've got your nine pounder here, you've got your two different types of horse artillery crew. So you can really then get some variety I think, yeah. which is which is nice. Um, what I should have done was I should have fished out one of the French ones and compared the, the cannon because there's a lot of nine pounders in here, and there's a lot of six pounders in yeah. the French one. And the way that they're made, because you have the crew and one wheel and the crew and, and one wheel, and then the gun and carriage fit together in the middle, you can mix these up yeah. to make things look a little bit different. French definitely would have had some captured British cannon uh, in their arsenal. Whether they had any at Waterloo is a different matter. Um, so that's certainly doable. And they've done that. I don't know if you, if you know. It's because with the pla injection molded plastic, 
by putting by putting everything in its flat plane, they can yeah. then, it's then going to make a nice mold. Whereas if they molded the cannon, the and the crew yeah. horizontally, it would it wouldn't work. Yeah, they'd have to use a slide mold or something. Um, so it's 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 quite creative. I'm really impressed by how they've done that. I've just noticed as well as one of the other things is that there are several in Canter and some in Gallop, so you can mix up your. Oh right, yeah. You know, down the bottom you've got them in Canter, and then in the middle you've got them in Gallop. Yeah. So you've got some some more dynamic poses as well. Yeah. Uh, it might look odd if you mix them up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might do, but this this is the, these models are something like thirteen and a half mil. Yeah. Does so that? And then the other thing to say about these. Um, is if is if you know if you haven't seen our other video, is why they're mixed up on the sprue. Why didn't why didn't they make a dragoon sprue, a light dragoon sprue, a lifeguard sprue? Why they haven't done that? And and the reason for that, as I understand it, getting these designed and manufactured each sprue is fantastically expensive. You know, it's very front heavy in the manufacturing costs. So by doing it this way means they can provide variety in the range. As a, as a purchaser, I realise you may not want exactly this mix, but I don't think they were ever going to be in a position to make a sprue for each type of cavalry. You know, it's a big company in Wargame, yeah. but it's not massive. Um, and so just, just doing that, I think, makes quite a big difference. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Should we have a look at the infantry? The infantry. Infantry. All right, so the infantry sprue for the Britishers. There's some pluses and some minuses here. So um, if you've seen the Gettysburg sprue and if you've seen the French sprue, the, the, there's been a, a process of evolution. So the main part of this sprue is you've got one, two, three, four bases of infantry, which is what they're recommending that you bait. And so you've got your standards. And interestingly, with the British ones, most regiments seem to have two standards. Yeah. Um, I don't know what whether one is the Union flag and one seems to be kind of a yellowish flag is 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 how I remember it. But there will normally there will be... it was um, British flag and regimental flag, wasn't yeah. it? Because the old trooping yeah. the colour and all that. Yeah. Um, and you've got a nice little sergeant with a with a all pike. Can you yeah. see him on the on yeah. the on the command base? Colour guard. Yeah. Yeah, which is nice. And you've got your drummer on there, so that's that's a really nice. And giving it a very British look. Um, so here's your front rank, and then you've got your four. Um, so that's going to make you your four bases of infantry, which is the size they're recommending. You've got your nine pounder, which again, they definitely got different uniform. The headgear is quite different from the horse artillery. You can see that. Yeah. From what we saw before. Um, you've got your mounted brigadier or divisional commander or whatever. Um, and that's probably one of the. One of the more striking things about assembling your army entirely from this box is all your divisional commanders are going to look exactly the same. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to make some extra resin sculpts and so forth. Um, that's in there. But what you've got on the French sprue that you're not getting here is you have your light infantry. Now here you're getting your light infantry, but they're not in skirmish order. Because what you've got most of your infantry are in the Waterloo type Belgic Shaco, but up here you've got one base, one base of troops in the Stovepipe Shaco, which is the really tall earlier one. And I've just noticed two of them are actually wearing Scotch bonnets. And two of them are wearing Scotch bonnets. So what these are intended to be, these are 95th rifles. Now, before you scream and shout and say 95th rifles are a light infantry regiment, then why are they giving you them ranked up? The reality is, only a handful of companies of the 95th were actually activated during the battle in the sand pit, I think it was, around, um, yeah. is it La Bella Alliance? It's one of the big central villages in the British yeah. position. Uh, the riflemen are just around there, and it's a few companies. The rest of the regiment is in reserve. It, so it is formed up. Yeah. That's how it spends, spends the day. But I think also, for those of you that are thinking of the Peninsular Army on the side in the longer term, this, this is the right headgear. There might be some subtle differences in the uniform, but they're going to be very small. Yeah. On, on this scale, how doable. So it's nice that they've got that sculpt in there. And you're going to get 10 bases of that, which is um, yeah. two and a half regiments. Oh, two and a half battalions, not regiments. Especially with the British, 
Um, do you know how, how uh, British British armies are, are deployed in these bigger orders of battle, Mike? I'll just just shoulder to shoulder and march forward. Best oh, yeah, right. but in in terms of the, in terms of the regiments on on the continent, regiments have multiple battalions. Yeah, yeah. And actually, in mo in the French army, a brigade is usually actually all all of the battalions of one regiment. Because in the British army, that's that's much less common. Usually, there's one regiment at home. Um, sorry, there's one regiment on campaign. The pr usually the first or the second sometimes. Yeah. Uh, one is on some kind of other overseas service, and there's a depot battalion. So in any given army, there's only going to be one battalion from a regiment. So when you talk about the, I don't know, the, the West Kent w w were here, it's actually, well, about a third of them were here, but that's how we deploy them. And in a British brigade, there wouldn't necessarily be any relationship between the four battalions, which we will often call regiments, because it's yeah. everything from that regiment that has <clears throat> been deployed to this theatre. And it can lead to a bit of a bit of a misunderstanding, because a French regiment has probably got five battalions. A British regiment on campaign will be just the one. Yeah. Very rarely would there be more than one. So that, that's the infantry sprue. Yeah, with a nine pounder gun, just up on the top again. And again, slightly different. There are the soldiers are facing away from the cannon rather than... They've got different poses, yeah. Or facing... No, actually, they're facing... They're facing in. Yeah. They're facing, they're facing yeah, away, away from us. Yeah. But, uh, they're facing into the cannon. Um, but definitely don't mix these up with the two yeah. other types. For those of you that want to get hold of... that, this is What we're seeing in this, this is the starter army. This is not everything that they do or are doing. And it's not even everything that's in plastic. They've already announced um, a kind of elite units box set. Um, which is one of the smaller boxes. I assume it'll be about twenty-five pounds. And the British one has got Highlanders and ninety-fifth in skirmish order. It's got your light infantry in it. As the French one has got um, all the middle guard and Marines of the guard or something like that. So the range isn't isn't finished. There's more in plastic, but I think you're going to find over time that the more nuanced stuff you're going to get in resin or, or yeah. metal probably um seems to be the way they went with the civil war stuff in the end disappointingly what's missing is there's no limbers here the point about napoleonic artillery and the what's the difference between horse and foot artillery the team of horses that pull it <laughs> yeah. where's the team of horses i know the guys are in different uniforms but the horse artillery and one of the big criticisms at the Battle of Waterloo is that Ney attacks with just the cavalry, you know, sometime after lunch. Um, the, he doesn't bring up the horse artillery and he doesn't yeah. bring up any infantry. And so the British squares can resist them. If the entire French artillery had forward deployed in that moment, was canister in those uh, British squares, that would have been a different story, probably. <laughs> that battle yeah. would have gone differently. Yeah, well, I, you remember seeing if you've ever seen the old Royal Tournament, you know, the, the, the horse artillery come in and they, they ride yeah, yeah. in, they drop it, they, they set up the guns and yeah. fire three rounds and then load it up again and, and trot off. So they would be behind the, their yeah. cavalry rather than being the static guns on the top of the hills. Yeah. But even the fog guns have got limbers. I mean, they, yeah. you know, it's not like everybody was at Waterloo all, all year waiting for the battle to start. Yeah. You know, these things have got to move. The limbers are not there. Um, and m moving guns during the battle is, is a part of a battle that lasts Although we may only play it for five or six tens or whatever you play, yeah. it is several hours long. Limbering up and unlimbering, if you're fighting, playing sharp, that's yeah. going to take time. If you're playing Waterloo, that you definitely can do that. That's going to happen <laughs> within a turn, you know. Yeah. Um, so, and the reason the reason I say that is that when a lot, with a lot of war games, because limbers are often extras. They don't make it to the table because it's money. It doesn't. It's money. It's space. Yeah. It's time to paint, and it, and um, it just it doesn't feel essential. Unfortunately, a bit like scenery is that people. You know, if it's that bit of people's collections that's weakest, is those kind of ancillary bits. And I think I think limbers and where you're going to put all those horses. The footprint <laughs> of artillery is actually well, massive. If you look at the picture of the of the if it all painted and set up. Mm. You know the the average war game table is going to be cluttered with just <laughs> two just armies got, yeah. and a few buildings and trees, and then you've got the you know you've got the baggage train as well. Mm. You know, so um, I assume that's probably why they've done it. Is let's let's move the fighting troops and yeah. 
Last few bits in the box, but you get you get some cracker dice, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're not they're not beautiful dice, but if you've never played this game before and you just bought it, they've given you six dice. Most people have no use for the dice that comes in starter sets. They don't waste money on it, but they do provide them. Yeah. And I, I like that. I've got a nice box somewhere that I give people Yeah, dice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You've got a mountain of them. So the manual's an interesting thing. Um, if you haven't seen us talk about this before, so I've, I'll say this a few times. We have already unboxed the French one, and so I'm trying not to duplicate too much of what I've already already said uh, but but the chunk of it is pertinent so this black powder um manual it's uh, it's not just a straight reprint of the black powder manual it is down to a4 and it is thick but it has been edited i wouldn't describe it as a new edition i'd describe it as maybe a revised version so one of the key things that they've done is they changed all the photographs so they're all Napoleonic photographs <laughs> and they've cut out um, sections of rules which don't mean anything for the Napoleonic Wars. Um, so you're not you're not going to find stuff uh, in here about machine guns um, and so yeah. forth because they're not relevant. I'll see see some Prussian 1870s land there um, you know or be told about mini balls because yeah. it, it, that, that's <laughs> that's not this. It's still fundamentally black powder they've just removed some bits change photos and then the scenarios at the back this is this is the best bit is they've made it the hundred days rather than there's a real mixture of scenarios covering the whole black powder era including including fluff, fluff. look at that it's a picture of sir arthur wellesley first duke of wellington he's a bonny lad isn't he what a nose though what a <laughs> nose uh, yeah so you're getting some british infantry rules telling you about column of companies stuff that's really specific to this period and it comes mostly from a supplement yeah um so if you're real grognardy you probably still want that supplement but most of the rules from that supplement have been embedded in here and it's even giving you the the, the stats so look if you want hanoverian cavalry look that's uh, as armament is saber funny that uh hands handwritten six morale four and stamina three it's, i think What's really nice about the Napoleonic period and these big coalition wars that develop is that you've got so many different troops on the field. Yeah. Yeah. My hussars may look very different to your hussars, although they're still hussars. More importantly, my own hussars look very different from each other. Napoleon has all of these Confederation of the Rhine troops. This is, this is a Baden unit of this and, you know, a Württemberg regiment of that. And they're all going to have very different levels of skill and motivation that will even show out in a, quite an abstract game like this. So that, that's one of the real strengths of it. And I like the fact that they've included stats for those kind of things. I think that's scenarios. the thing that's always put me off of it. It's not just British troops painted. So yeah. you paint lots of, lots of Grenadiers and lots of 95th. Yeah. But then, you've, like you say, you've got the Germans, you've got the Prussians, and you've got the, yeah. you know. And yes. I think if you, want to stick, if you want to stick to a simple paint scheme for British, do King's German Legion, because I think they're all the same. Yeah. Um, what uh, King's German Legion... Are basically, they are German, but they would have regarded themselves as British. Um, so th that Hanoverian kings that we had, you know, they're, they're emigres and so forth from the continent, fighting under British service. But they have a very straightforward uniform. Yeah, um, and 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 it's very it's very standardised. You don't have to worry about the colours of the epaulets and so forth to the same degree. I think could be completely <laughs> wrong, of course. Um, but yeah, King, King's German Legion. But the manual was it was a nice inclusion. Because rewriting a rules book is a big deal. Yeah. You know, you, you, they don't necessarily need to do that. They give you the they could give you the core rules and a little play sheet or something. Yeah. But they have gone to that effort, so I was really pleased with that. And I'm, I'm thinking, when I'm doing all this painting, I'm going to come back to this thing and have my stress relief. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and sticking it in the bubble wrap thing. Yeah. So um, that's just protect from all this sprue, scratching it. Quite often when you get a free rule book in a game system... It's damaged, especially yes. if it's paperback. Uh, and, and, you know, not, not being overly critical, but I have had that with the bolt action starter, starter set. The damage, yeah, get in touch with customer service. They sent me another one. You know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's going to happen, but this is, this is nice. It's got, it's sort of guaranteed it. It's yeah. a nice bit. And this will probably cost you, if you wanted to buy this, it'd be 20 odd quid. Yeah. You know, even though it's safe. And as you say, it's got the supplement in as well. So you yeah, yeah. It. Yeah. If you want to get started in Napoleonic Waterloo, this is the place to go. Right, last few bits. Yeah. Oh. Where are we going now? Where are we going now? Should we talk about should we talk about Sarissa Precision? 
Sarissa Precision. Yeah. Sarissa Precision. We have the La Belle Alliance. La Belle Alliance. So, oh, I want to. I want to remember. This is one of the one of the positions in the middle. So Ugamon's off to one side. A Belle Alliance. It's either on Napoleon's side or on British side in the middle. I, I think. I think. Yeah. But I'm I'm not a hundred percent. You know, don't don't quote me on it. Um, so this again, it's different to the one that came in the in the French start set. Yeah. And that's really nice. I really like to see a bit of scenery in a start set because I think it gives you it puts you in period. Yeah. And, you know, I said before about about oh, is scenery. I think is a weak part of people's collections. Possibly the weakest. Yeah. It takes time. It takes money. And if all the start sets you ever bought came with scenery, everyone would have a lot more of it. Yeah. So this one, the Bell Alliance, here's one I prepared earlier. Look at that. Have actually built and primed it uh, with cheap uh, one pound spray, Ralcan from the, from the shop. So this went together quite easily. It's a, it's a fairly substantial piece of scenery. What would you say that is? Eight to 10 inches. Uh, seven inches long. Yeah. So it, it's significant. It does have a detachable roof. It is different. This is the one from the British set that we looked at, which is of a, a comparable sort of size. Um, the fiddly bit on this one, you'll see as I go, it's just a little bit tight. So I don't think I, I don't think over time having a detachable roof is going to work for me with this. I found that with others. I've got the um, sort of like World War Two French. Uh, buildings. I bought a village set, yeah, and it's the same. But a quick touch up with a Dremel on the the gables, and then it, it fits in nicely. Yeah, just a little bit of a a rub with sandpaper or that, and they do drop in. All right. Okay. When I first saw those, though, it reminded me many many years ago. I had the Airfix Hugemont farm, right, and in that same grey but plastic, and I thought, like, right. you know, it looks almost. Right. Looks well, almost the same. The same uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it's it's cut MDF. Yeah, you also get a uh, painting instructions and you get IKEA type instructions on this side. The roof cavity, this is in, um, the bits that I found more challenging, is how Sarissa do their chimneys. Yes, <laughs> you've had this as well. <laughs> because because I'm lazy, because I'm rushing. The way that they make these chimneys um, is it's three pieces of MDF glued in a lamp in a laminate with the chimney bits in the middle so this is how they use you know two mil mdf or one yeah. mil mdf to create a, a thicker object now for some people that's not going to be a problem for me i use pva and i don't want to sit there and hold it for two hours and so it does incline to slip a little bit yeah so i get a little bit but you know with 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 the paint it'll just look maybe like it's a little bit distorted. again with the with those pieces and then on the inside reinforcing i normally use a hot glue gun just, use a hot glue down, gun. just to hold it into place and again the on the bigger ones the mold part chimney you still got to give it a little bit of a shave with a file yeah um yeah, the chimney level. pots is normally free rings in the MD, the, the, the two male mbf and you've got to stack them on top of each other oh this on the 28 mil ones. yeah yeah um so the, i found there you, the, the, you find a pencil of the right size <laughs> oh right and just slot them, over, slot the them over and then glue them together right yeah and then yeah. then they stay and so that's nice. just a little bit but yeah, yeah. I, I do like the sarissa i've got some um for the ancients as well mm. some, and, and, it's, and it's good to see them making their way when the strong team dog they had yeah. some sarissa scenery it seems like i don't know whether warlord are strictly commissioning sarissa to do it or whether it's just about a relationship then yeah but, because there is a ugamon farm yeah the, the, you know ugamon, the, this is not ugamon. ugamon is massive yeah even in even in this scale it's going to half fill your table yeah. Yeah. um it's a complete four-sided um french courtyard and yeah outbuilding so you've seen the bases uh before so you've got on on here six bases these do your infantry and your cavalry they just peg into these in two ranks you probably want to paint them before you put them on the bases because they're, they're fairly tight together uh these are for your commanders and this is for your artillery it's it's pretty straightforward again pre-colored plastic if you really wanted to and given the amount of time it's going to take to paint this lot you, the fact that it's pre-coloured plastic, you can play a battle out of the box. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be beautiful, but you're going to know who's is who's. 
um, which is probably quite important with so many units uh, until they're painted. I, re I remember when they did the anniversary of um, the Battle of Trafalgar, yeah, and they did a reenactment, and they had red versus blue. Right, they, did, they didn't reenactment. Where did they find so many tall ships? Uh, there was only a couple of ships, and it was off Portsmouth Harbour, but it was a, a, right. just a few sailing ships that were dressed up to right. look. Right, and the the reenactment was red versus blue. So right, um, yeah, because uh, there's about thirty ships aside, I think. Yes, Trafalgar, maybe more. Oh, no, I, I remember from Tall Ships and Iron Men, it was um, probably more than double that. Right, Three long lines of ship. So yeah, yeah, but, but you yeah. know. We got a red couple on of blue. tall ships sailing around. Yeah. That was nice. Red on blue. <laughs> red on blue, indeed. Right, as we come to the close, there's a few bits of paper there you're going to show us, aren't you, Mike? British Painting Guide. Ha oh, so, ha oh, Britishers. Yep. Line. He's holding it the right way up and everything. Yeah. I like this. It's got the colours in, but it doesn't tell you specifically which company. So you've got a little colour guide. So right. you can go to your local hobby shop and you can... Mix oh, so that they're, they're purple, that they're red, so you can yeah. find the one that you want. You've got pea green yeah. and you've got dark green and you've got a little colour chart on there. Because yeah. you go to your local hobby stop and you've got four different ranges. Yeah, yeah. And you you're looking for a colour and they've got the same mm. the same colour but they're different names. By, yeah. I think about my paint collection, because I paint mostly World War II and so forth, apart from the Warhammer armies that I have, that I paint for, which isn't very many, they're all military I don't have primary colours. No, <laughs> I don't, I, because they're not used in 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 so you know camouflage uniforms. Yeah. No, that's not yellow. That's that's some kind of ochre. Yeah. Because um, what yeah. I would be doing, I'd, I'd be doing base coat in probably the the red, mm. um, and then paint the trousers and yes. paint the berry bits. And I, I would cheat in a few places with a sh coloured sharpie. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. For some the old coloured sharpie. Yeah. I mean, the thing about painting models, that, and there are some beautiful examples out there uh, that there definitely are. Uh, people putting a lot of work in. F for me, this would be a fairly quick paint job. This would be yeah. this would be a, a red jacket, straps across. And that's basically what it tells you to do there, yeah. doesn't it? You can take it a lot further. And maybe I would with like some of the cavalry regiments. But in terms of getting them yeah. out, because there is something about that regiment, that mass look, that, you know, the, the flags, which I think yeah. I'm going to show us in a minute, and things like that make more of a difference. Um, you, you know, if you're thinking about the miniature, yeah, up, up here, your miniature still looks beautiful, but from two feet away, yours doesn't look that different to mine, and mine's just got a red jacket with a white cross across the front. Yeah, it's just little things like the, the brown stripe for the for the rifle, the silver yeah, on yeah. the bayonets, um, that probably, maybe in the hackles you can go... On, on the shake coach, maybe if you're really accurate, you can go and put the different hackles on for. Oh, you, you definitely, and people yeah. definitely have, even on this yeah. scale. Um, and it's providing you with that information if you want to go that far. Yeah. But it's still a system that says, Do you know, if you want, you just play with this. Yeah. You know, um, somewhere between those two is probably w w where yeah. I would be. All right. So got... that's, that's that. Flags. Lots and then of the flags. flag sheet. And they're, so they're paired, like you said yeah. earlier. So you, we've got a union flag and. Grenadier Guards, Coldstream, Scots, King's German Legions, various regiments of those, mm. King's Own Borderers, Welsh Fusiliers. Very nice. Oh, oh, the Welch, W-E-L-C-H, Welch Ooh, Fusiliers. Now, Welch Fusiliers. So, uh, yeah, so you've got Union flag and regimental flag. And again, a really nice inclusion in, in here because you've got two standard bearers in the regiment. I mean, it, when w with a project like this, You'd immediately have to go and find flags of the right yes. size and the right type if they didn't provide you with a flag sheet. Yeah. Yeah. And unlike some of their earlier flag sheets, so I've got some Japanese flags, I think, for in World War II, and they're on photographic paper and they're just really shiny. Yes. And it and it doesn't quite work. This is a nice sort of it's like thick paper, isn't it? So it's yeah. gonna it's gonna glue and it's gonna allow you to fold it so that yeah. it looks a bit more organic, but it's not gonna be shiny. Yeah, again with these, you get a, get a paper clip and use that to make the fold and mm. pinch it and it'll give you the the, the the tube that you can put down the yes. onto the spear and then glue it in place. Yeah. They've got a nice thick borders as well there. So you, you can... You're, you're, not, you're not cutting into the one below yeah. to take yours out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the same on the fold. You've got a nice big red broad stripe for the pole for side. The, for, the, for the pole side, so, yeah. Really nice. So, but, Mike... We've we, we've been to this um, this set. 
it's I think 90 pounds so it's not cheap it's definitely not cheap. And if you want to fight the entirety of Battle of Waterloo, you're going to need more than one of these. That's, that's <laughs> certainly true. Um, but you are getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Oh, five, six, seven. So it looks like you're getting, you're getting 10, 10 to 13 regiments, depending on how big you make them, and six or seven regiments of cavalry. That's a pretty big game of black powder. Yeah. That is a pretty big game back powder. Now they don't yet do a versus set half this size. And I think that's because of this problem. Yeah. They, if they reduce the amount of cavalry sprues you get, you're just not going to get any regiments yeah. out of it. I think is probably the case. Um, but I think down the line you might start to see that. You can also, if you want the specific things, they do do small boxes. Yeah. You can get just another three. There's three sprues in the small I, boxes. I, I did remember looking at the pre-release and then the, the, the £500 everything for each arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're just huge amounts. But two of those um, out of the box, I think it would be a great um, experience. You know, I mean, though, yeah, just get one of these boxes. You'd be paying for a terribly long time. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd probably... That's the, do they do they pop in? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, and yeah then they pop push out in. again. So yeah, yeah, that would be the bit. Is they've got um, they've got little buttons in the feet. Yeah, uh, for either end of the sprue. And I've definitely seen demo games. People who want to try the battle out of the box is like we're not going to get even a team of us wouldn't paint this yeah. for several months. Probably yeah. uh, people have done that. Whether you need a bit of blue tack or something, I don't know. I haven't I haven't yeah. actually looked into that. But I, I was I was seriously interested in doing. I've never in all my years of gaming, I've never done Waterloo, right? Other than some old tin soldiers with some dodgy paint on, um, right. oh, action, yeah, yeah, action yeah. man bazookas at fire. Some level. lead included paint, no yeah, doubt. Yeah. yeah, toxic as, and yeah. just firing um, action man bazookas that fired little proper shells and knocking them over. Um, I've done American Civil War in six mil, mm. um, so I like the idea of the American Civil War set. Mm. I haven't said I'm tempted yet to buy of the Waterloo, but I do like what they've done. Um, yeah, I'm impressed with it. Uh, well, for me, it's it's the evolution. It, it's the having played that Amer got that American Civil War set, which is which is just a mountain of the same sprue. Yeah, and they've made like a blended sprue, so they're mostly in uniform, but some people have got uh, have got mixed hats on. Yeah, so they look like they look rather tidy for Confederates, and they look a little bit rough for. A, so yeah. it's, it, you're not gonna. You don't want that for your kind of um, sort of six, you know, bull run union forces yeah. with their brand new uniforms yeah. and boots that are and killing both sides them. Wearing the same uniform, uh, yeah, yeah. In a lot of cases, <laughs> um, they're, they're you know they're they're a bit they're, they're okay for campaigning unions yeah. or, or maybe um, uh, new regiment confederates because yeah. they're a bit too neat for confederates yeah. and a bit too not neat for yeah. union. But that that's where they started. Then they've worked out, let's mix up what's on each of the sprues. And that really gives me hope. And in this one, we're seeing the two different cavalry types having two yeah. different guns, the different poses. There's, you can use the horse artillery six pound, nine pounder crew for the six pound yeah. gun because of the way they've made it. And as we see other stuff, presumably they're going to put some 12 pounders with the French in there. And you, that odd, this captured gun in this scenario yeah. or whatever, mixing all of that up. I think I think there's real, you know, the future is really yeah. bright for this stuff because they found a way to give you the variety. Yeah, and I just I just think the number of soldiers you get in for the price, it's mm. definitely yeah. With, with your buddy buying two boxes of these and and if that's if that's your this year project, yeah, and that and that is what this is, right? Yeah. This is your this year project. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. It's going to take you a while to paint it. Yeah, but you can play it while you're painting. No, which if I wasn't making YouTube videos is exactly how I would do it. <laughs> I would I would base them all up and we'd play games and I'd be painting them between games. Yeah. You know, one regiment at a time or whatever. And if you're looking to do this, I would strongly to keep you motivated, play the game in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. Bring yeah. Br bring a new painted regiment to each battle. Yeah. Um, all right guys, that was that was our yeah. look at this. We have pre-ordered the Highlanders and so forth, so we're going to have a quick look at them. Um, hopefully this was still useful to you. And sorry if there was a bit of overlap between this and the British one that you've only just seen from us. I know, I, I was, is that, there's not that much new I, I, I could bring to that. Um, but it's a fantastic set. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. If you've enjoyed this video and you're thinking, hmm, maybe I need to add to the Lead Mountain, consider buying Warlord Epic uh, Waterloo campaign from us on our online store, modelingforadvantage.co.uk. Thank you.